I welcome each one of you, my fellow pilgrims to heaven, for our weekly Bible study in English. This is the 13th Sabbath school lesson, the last lesson study for this quarter, the last lesson study on book of Psalms. So I welcome each one of you for our Sabbath school lesson study. The title of our 13th lesson is Wait on the Lord, Wait on the Lord. Let us pray before we open the Bible to learn from Psalms. Loving Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for taking care of us and our families and our congregations throughout this quarter. You have brought us to the end of this quarter. You have brought us to the end of this month, March. We want to praise you. Take care of us in the next quarter also. Lord, Lord, we want to thank you for teaching us a number of lessons from the book of Psalms. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can understand the deeper implications of this lesson study and also grant us the heavenly wisdom so that we may understand everything so that we will live as your sons and daughters to bring glory and honor to you. Help us to wait on you and also I thank you. Lord, I want to thank you for all of these young people who are assisting me. Bless them abundantly. Thank you, Lord, for this humble ministry of teaching you a lesson because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, wait on the Lord. When do we wait? When people wait, many times waiting is so stressful. Waiting is so much uh, challenging for some of us. Suppose you are waiting for your turn in the bank to withdraw some money or you are there at the store to get some things but there is a queue there is a big line the same thing happens in the many places same thing happens when you want to board a bus there is a long queue or train yes but sometimes when you come to know that bus in which you are supposed to travel that train in which you are supposed to travel, that aeroplane in which you are supposed to travel delays, then your stress level increases. You get so much upset. This happens to all of us. As we are waiting on the Lord, are we stressful? Especially about His second coming. As His second coming is delayed, are we also stressful? Are we also giving up the hope? Sometimes when they announce that this train is delayed for several hours, then you're looking for some other alternate arrangement. But when we come to know that Jesus coming is delayed, do we also thinking of any other when we know that Jesus' second coming is delayed, are we so much disappointed, depressed? We will study together. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. The memory text comes to us from Psalm 27 verse 14. A very, very wonderful and meaningful text. Psalm 27 verse 14 which says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. My brothers and sisters, if each one of us wait on the Lord by faith and also having a good courage not to be discouraged, then He will strengthen our heart. That is both spiritually as well as physically. If anything wrong with your heart, physically, He will strengthen it. He will heal it. Even spiritually, if we are downhearted, depressed he will strengthen us he will bless us throughout this quarter we have learned from this book of psalms that god is the creator god is the king of the entire universe god is the judge of the entire universe god is the sustainer of all living beings god is the deliverer for each one of us on this earth god shows grace mercy kindness compassion and love to each one of us. We have learned many 
relationships which we have with others. We have studied many teachings which are so much connected with us in day-to-day -day life that all, all of that we learned from book of Psalms. So as we are waiting for the Lord and his second coming, we are not just to sit idly. We are not just relaxing and say, oh, he will come one day. Let me relax. No. This is the time as we are spending the time waiting on the Lord. This is the time for us to make necessary spiritual preparation for his second coming. At the same time, not only making necessary spiritual preparation, it is the time to witness to others and tell others that Jesus is the Savior, that he is coming soon. So that's why the time of delay is not for time to be depressed or discouraged. Yet, it is the time to come more closer to God. That's why the call of waiting, as we looked at Psalm 27 verse 14, the memory text, surely if you wait on the Lord, God will strengthen our faith. God will heal our hearts spiritually as well as physically. In Psalm 37 verse 7 to 9, there is a comparison made between wicked and the righteous. As God's people, we wait on the Lord. And do not worry for anything. Sure, as human beings, we have concerns of our day-to-day -day life, our family, our job, our studies, a number of concerns. But that is not to be worried because God takes care of us. But the wicked people, when we look at them, they prosper within a short time. They do all kinds of evil ways. They follow all kinds of evil methods. And they come up so quickly, especially in their business, in their job. They prosper and they climb the ladder. But how long that continues? Because they have followed ungodly methods, ungodly principles to climb up that ladder of leadership or to become rich within a short time through many illegal means which God's people should not practice. Many corrupt ways in order to prosper in the business which is not for God's people to do so. That's why they grow like a grass within a few days. They will also dry up Within a short time, they will also perish. But those who wait on the Lord, God's people, they will inherit the earth. They will be like the green tree. They will be like the tree planted by the waters, as we read in Psalm 1, Psalm 1, verse 2 and 3. They will be just growing. Always they are green. And also they will bear fruit in its season. But the wicked people, Yes, they shoot up within a short time. They also disappear within a short time. God's people, they live forever and ever. Sure, on this earth, death comes one day. But that is not the end of everything. After second coming of Jesus, that person who followed the Lord, waited on the Lord, will resurrect and will live forever. But the wicked people, like any other persons, like any other people, they also perish within a short time. We may say, oh, they have a long life. Yes. How long? Maybe half a century. Maybe 60 years. 70 years. Or maybe 80 years. Their lifespan. After that, they perish. Then there is no more hope for them. But God's people, they live eternally. Let us look at some. 40 verse 1, Psalm 40, Psalm 40 verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. My brother, my sister, are you waiting patiently? Yes, in this sinful life, on this sinful earth, there are many moments in our lives we have to wait patiently for the Lord and his intervention. But though we wait on the Lord patiently, he heard my cry. 
which means he listened to my prayer. He answered me. We are told in Galatians chapter 5 verse 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse 5. We wait on the Lord by the Holy Spirit to receive righteousness. Righteousness comes by faith in Jesus Christ. That's why wait on the Lord so that we will receive that righteousness. We have to wait by faith. And by faith, we have to continue in the hope in spite of odds of life on this earth. In our day-to-day -day life, there may be many challenges, but continue to live in faith and hope so that God will take care of us. Jesus will bless us. Jesus will take care of us. We are told in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, a very, very meaningful verse for us. Romans 8, verse 18. It says, the present sufferings are not worthy if you compare the glory which is going to come. The present suffering, the challenges, the, the present suffering in life, the present challenges in life, they are nothing, so to speak, if you are comparing that future glory which we are going to receive in God's kingdom in heaven. All of you know that I don't have eyesight for the last over half a century. Every day of my life is a big challenge. And added to that, my wife slept in the Lord about four years ago. And with that, more and more challenges are added each day. When I wake up in the morning, so many challenges surround my mind. How to tackle this? How to go on with this? But God is granting me his grace. But how long I have to go through these challenges of life? Only short time. If I compare that eternity, which I'm going to receive through Jesus Christ, then what is after all this 50 years or 55 years or 60 years of challenges of life? It is just like a, a drop in the ocean. My suffering, my challenges are just like a drop in the ocean. Like that, comparing the eternity, whatever the challenges you have, my brother, my sister, they are nothing. They are nothing because we are going to receive such a glorious life in heaven. That's why let us focus on the glory and the glorious life which we are going to live in the presence of Jesus and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit and millions and millions of angels throughout the eternity. But not only we who are going through suffering and challenges of life, even the whole earth, the entire creation, we read that in Romans chapter 8 verse 22, the whole creation is groaning. What for? For the intervention of Jesus Christ. So that God will intervene and come the second time, put an end to all of this suffering and challenges. That's why it is worth waiting on the Lord. Let us look at Psalm 131. Psalm 131. This is Psalm of David. David says, O oh Lord, I am not having any pride in me, though he was the king. He says, I don't have any pride because everything what I have is given by you. And he's comparing himself like a child, like children who wean from mother's milk. When uh, children, when that child, boy or girl, and leaves drinking the mother's milk. Then that child thinks, I'm independent. I can walk, I can run, I can play by myself, I can walk by myself, I can run by myself, I can play by myself. Yet, that child who weaned needs mother's help every day. So, after pray, the child comes running to the mother for some water to drink. And mother gives the water and something to eat, mother feeds. And to change the dress, mother helps. So, for everything, though the child weaned from the milk of the mother, the child is depending on the mother. Likewise, though we the believers are living in this life, on this earth, we are grown up, but still 
we are just like that child who weaned from the mother's milk and we have to depend on Jesus every day for small things as well as big things by faith. If you wait on the Lord, then there will be a great blessing for us. That's why, my brothers and sisters, do you wait for the Lord and his blessing and his leading in your life? Let us look at Psalm 126 also. Psalm 126. This Psalm, Jewish people sang first time. They came back from their captivity from Babylon. They spent 70 long years in Babylon as captives. And God, in his mercy, he punished them for their wrongdoing. But in his mercy, in his grace, he restored them, brought them back to Jerusalem. When they came, they sang with so much of joy and happiness and said, there is laughter in our mouth. There is happiness in our face. And our faces are glowing with joyfulness. Yes, definitely. And also this psalm also tells us that comparison. When there is a farmer, when the time comes for the time, all the people who are connected with agriculture and doing some farming, they know that when the time comes for planting the seeds, sowing time, they have to plow the land, they have to dig it, they have to make it ready for planting the seeds. But when they are planting the seeds, they do it with so much of uh, sorrow, sometimes with tears, because they have to spend money, they have to remove the stones, they have to make the soil soft. It is a uh, hard work. But they are sowing with sadness, sometimes tears. But by God's grace, they receive the rain, the early rain and the latter rain, and some showers in between. It's all because of the grace of God, they received the rain. Because in Israel nation, they did not have big rivers. They did not have canals. They did not have the modern technology to have some bore well and pump the water from the ground. So they had to depend on the rain. God sent the rain in season. God sent the rain from time to time. So the plants were growing. And the time comes after the latter rain. The crop is ready for the harvest. The crop is ready for the harvest. The crop is ready for the harvest. Then, when they're harvesting, oh, they're singing and harvesting. So much joyful. When they carry those sheaves, oh, how joyful they are because they had the best crop, bumper crop that year. It's because of the grace of God. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, when we are witnessing to others, when we go and give Bible study to others, when we preach to others, sure, it's like a, the time of sowing. It's not easy, hard. People don't respond. People may not come forward to the meeting. But when the time comes, when God blesses your witnessing, when they come to take baptism, how joyful you are. There will be more joy when Jesus comes the second time. When Jesus says, my son, my daughter, it's because of your witnessing. It's because of your good Christian lifestyle. My daughter, my son, it is because of your Bible study which you gave to your neighbor. See, this neighbor is here today in heaven. Or this person in that slum is here because of your visiting that person, giving Bible study and praying with that person. See, this person, you have gone to that little village and preached. Connected revival meeting, it's because of your work. This person, these people are here saved. What a joy it will be for each one of us to see such people. First thing is, we are so joyful, we are saved, we are in heaven. Along with that, when Jesus introduces those people who are drawn to Jesus and saved and go to heaven because of your work on this earth, how joyful you will be. We cannot express in human words that happiness because people are saved because of your work. That's why bringing the sheaves into heaven. My brothers and sisters, let us also look at Psalm 92. 
Psalm 92. This Psalm, Psalm 92, is the song which Jewish people sing on every Sabbath. Because this Psalm talks about God's creation. Psalm 92 verse 4. When I look at your creation, how joyful I am, how grateful I am. God created everything within six days and rested on the seventh day. So, in order to remember that, though the word Sabbath is not mentioned in this psalm, yet one of the songs which they sing on Sabbath in the, by the Jewish people in their worship in the synagogues and at the temple in those days, they sang this song 92. There is a comparison in this song between righteous people and the wicked people. We also saw that one briefly in Psalm 37. And this psalm says, the wicked people are growing like the grass. Within a short time, in few days, they are growing. But the righteous people grow slowly like a plant. The plant grows and becomes a tree. And those uh, trees are also mentioned here. Palm tree, date palm tree. And also the cedar of Lebanon. The Lebanon cedar tree. When we read a little bit about the cedar tree, that is so wonderful, very costly, because the wood is having the color like the golden color. And the fragrance of the wood stays there, even if you keep that piece of wood for even 100 years. It is so nice smell, fragrant smell, which means we don't need to use any room freshness. That kind of a tree, cedar tree. But it grows only one foot a year. It grows one foot tall in one year. And the maximum, the cedar tree goes up to 55 to 60 feet. Which means it requires for the full grown cedar tree, 55 to 60 years to grow. That's a long time. That's a long time. Almost the life of uh, some of us, 60 years. It takes time to grow. But it is worth because that grass which grew within a short time, within few days, perished also within a short time. Likewise, the date palm tree, it also grows slowly. It grows, it takes at least five years for the date palm tree. It takes at least five years for the date palm tree to grow, to start bearing fruit. So that's why God's people, righteous people, those who are waiting on the Lord are compared as date palm tree and also cedar tree. But we are not so much acquainted with the date palm tree. If you look at the date palm tree, it grows. Always there is a tender shoot growing up. Always there is one. But most of us are acquainted with coconut tree. Look at coconut tree. That also belong to the family of uh, palm trees. And if you look at a coconut tree, always there is a tender shoot standing straight. And when it opens up, there comes another tender shoot out. Which means always it is growing and also bearing fruit. Whether it is date palm or whether it is a coconut, always there are bunches of coconuts. Yes, likewise, God's people who wait on the Lord, they will grow. Let us look at Psalm 92 verse 12. God's people, they grow like the palm tree. They have the fruit. They also have always that tender new leaf shooting up. Which means that is a sign of it's growing. My brothers and sisters, if you wait on the Lord, you will grow spiritually as well as physically and we can bear fruit we can bear fruit and we let us look at psalm 92 verse 15 even in its old age it still grows still new leaves come even in its old age and it bears fruit likewise we have to learn that spiritual lesson even when you're advancing in life it's what we call old age. But still, you can grow. You can give glory to God. You can bear fruit for the Lord. You can be a fruitful witness unto the Lord. 
you can be an active you can be an active witnessing person to the lord even in your advanced age for example god used young people in the bible god used the children samuel when he was a boy god used him god used young people like daniel and his friends like john the revelator he was only 17 when he came to the lord yes god used the young people god also used old people like prophet haggai most of the bible scholars say haggai when god called him to be a prophet must be at least 90 years old or 95 years old some even say 100 years old so god has no age difference god can use anyone children god can use young people god can use adults god can use old people god can use you can bear fruit for him you can witness unto the lord you can declare his glory what all the miracles god has done to you you can declare them unto you and also we read in Psalm 92 verse 10, and God has lengthened my horn. He has anointed me with the new oil, which means God blesses his people who wait on the Lord. That's why my brothers and sisters, let us continue to trust in the Lord and wait on the Lord by faith and hope. As we said, Psalm 92, they sing on the Sabbath day. Sabbath brings sanctification to god's people we read in exodus chapter 31 verse 13 which says exodus 31 verse 13 it says sabbath sanctifies people which means if you observe the sabbath we are sanctified sanctified means we are made holy our sins are washed away yes we are sinners we need that holiness unless we are holy we cannot go to heaven who gives that that holiness we cannot make ourselves holy because we are sinful. But only the holy God, God says, come to me, trust in me. I will wash you as white as snow. And also, I will declare you as a righteous person, holy person. That's why God is the one who sanctifies us. The same thought also we read in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12 to 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 12 to 20. It is the Lord that sanctifies us. That's why my brothers and sisters, let us wait on the Lord. Now, which is the best time in the day to wait on the Lord? Let us learn that also from Psalm 5 verse 3. Psalm 5 verse 3. My voice you shall hear in the morning. Psalmist is telling, O oh Lord, you will hear my voice, that means my prayer, in the morning. So, I direct my voice up to you, unto you every morning. Why in the morning? Because it is in the morning when we wake up, we start our daily routine. What all we need to do during the day? We start in the morning. That's why before you start your daily routine, daily activities, pray to the Lord morning. And what time of the morning? Because God listens to us. And he will grant us his grace for us for that day. He will also grant us the blessing, spiritual blessings as well as physical blessings, enough for that day. That's why God is listening to us. But does God listen to us in the afternoon? Does God listen to us in the evening? Does God listen to us in the night? Yes, because Psalm 121 verse 3, the Lord will not sleep nor slumber. Any part of the day, yes, we can do that. But why in the morning? That is so fresh. You have taken some rest and now you have woken up. That means you are awake. So you can put all of your daily routine, daily activities, what, are, what you are supposed to do, what you are going to do. You can place before the Lord all of your burdens for that day and say, Lord, grant me your grace so that by your grace, I can do all of these things. I can accomplish all of these things for you. Yes, we need to do that. Psalm 30 verse 5. Psalm 30 verse, verse 5. His anger is for only for a moment. Yes, when we depart from his commandments, 
When we do something wrong, God is upset. God is angry. But the anger of God is only for a short time. But the favor of God is for lifetime. For the favor of God is for lifetime. Let us also look at Psalm 59 verse 16. Psalm 59 verse 16. God, you are my defense. You are my refuge. And it says, in the day of my trouble, I will sing because you are my defense. You are my refuge. And your mercy, your power, you are granting me. So I will sing. I will sing loud. When? In the morning. I will sing loud in the morning because of your mercy, because of your grace, and because of your uh, goodness to me. I will sing in the morning. This is what we read in Psalm 59 verse 16. That's why sing in the morning and also in the evening also. Psalm 92 verse 2. Let us look at Psalm 92 verse 2. It says, I will sing in the morning about your loving kindness and also I will sing in the evening your faithfulness to me. So Psalm 92 verse 2. In the morning as well as in the evening, Psalm says, I will sing unto you because he's showing his mercy. Let us look at Psalm 119, 119 as Psalm 119, that is Psalm 119 and verse 147. Psalm 119, verse 147. He says, I will rise in the dawn before the morning, which means still when it is dark, the psalmist says, I will rise up and I will. I will cry for your help early in the morning before it is even daybreak when still it is dark the psalmist says I will wake up and I will and I will cry for your help oh God we read in Mark chapter 1 verse 35 when Jesus was on this earth when did he get up to pray early in the morning while it is still dark while it is still dark Jesus went out into a solitary place and prayed. My brother, my sister, when do you wake up to pray? I know in this modern time, TV is taking much of our time and beyond midnight, people watch some sports, some movies, some serial, something of that nature. When they sleep late, they cannot wake up in the morning to pray. When did you pray? Job prayed in the morning, early in the morning, Job 1.5. Abraham also woke up early in the morning to pray. We read that in Genesis chapter 21. That's why Jesus is the morning star. Revelation 22 verse 16, Jesus is the morning star. And we read in Psalm 30 verse 3, Psalm 30 verse 3, Psalm 30 verse 3, which says, which says, weeping continues in the night, but the joy comes in the morning. Weeping continues in the night, joy comes in the morning. We read in, we read in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8, about the account of Jesus' death and resurrection. And that night, all the disciples, including Mary Magdalene and all of those uh, women who came to the tomb, they were crying. They had no clue. That Jesus is going to rise in the morning. They had no clue that Jesus is going to resurrect in the morning. But when they came to the tomb that morning, when they came to know that Jesus, Jesus came back to life, Jesus resurrected. What a joy. Night time they were crying. Morning, so much joy came to them. That's why my brothers and sisters, Whatever the challenges we have, whatever the suffering we have, whatever the pain we have, that is not going to continue forever. The day is coming. The day of joy is coming. That's why may the Lord bless each one of us so that we may realize that soon the day of joy, that is the day of second coming, is coming. That's why let us wait on the Lord by faith. And with hope, as we are waiting for the Lord and His second coming, let us make necessary spiritual preparation in our lives. 
in our families and also take that little extra time of waiting to witness unto the Lord about his goodness, about his salvation, about his grace and about his soon coming. We have to witness. May the Lord bless each one of us to do so as we are waiting for his second coming. If that is your decision, join with me. I want to pray and conclude this 13th lesson, the last lesson for this quarter. Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to, loving Father, I want to thank you for your loving kindness to each one of us to realize that we have to wait on you. If we wait on you, you are going to strengthen our heart. Bless us, Lord, so that we can wait on you by faith and hope. Continue to lead us by your grace and your mercy. Bless each person who is watching this video and also sharing it and also sharing it with others. And bless me so that I can continue this humble ministry. Bless us so that uh, we can enter into the new quarter in few days from now, into the next month. Bless us, Lord, and guide us. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful lesson study. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, God be with you. God bless you. Continue to uphold me in your personal prayers for this uh, humble ministry and pray for those who are assisting me, these young people here. Thank you. God be with you. God bless you. We'll meet you, if God willing, again in the next lesson study that will be a new set of lessons for the new quarter, April, May and June. Thank you. God be with you.